here we have the Sony VIA Duo 13. We're going to open it up and explore the insides. The reason why it's called Duo because it's a tablet and a laptop. It houses a laptop underneath. So you can open it up and it comes with a laptop like this, which has a keyboard and a small touchpad. So before you begin, remember to put your laptop on something soft so you don't damage it or scratch it when you move it around. And a warning, this is ridiculously hard to open. So don't open up if you're afraid. So there's one screw there which I already removed. After you remove that, you're going to need your prying tool to pry open the top part. So this is a bit hard. It comes off relatively easy, but you're going to have to open up your laptop and pry over the, pry open the other side to make it easier to come off. So I'm just going to take it off screen for a bit, so it's easier for me to pry open. So there, now that I, I put on my lap and opened it up, I pried open the other side so it's much easier. This is just held down by plastic clips. There's a few screws under it. There should be four screws. You're going to have to remove the NFC cover, this square thing here. There's screws under there as well. There's another four screws hiding under there. You're going to have to open up the laptop. Uh, there's two screws hiding between the screen and the keyboard. And the speaker bar on the bottom, there's a stick tape over it. Which, there's a few screws underneath that as well. So now we're going to open up the laptop to show you where the screws are in be between the screen and the keyboard. I don't know if you can see this, but there's a there's a screw right here. I'm pointed somewhere there. There's a screw same same thing on the other side as well. So there's a screw here as well, which is on the opposite side of it. So I just took it, I just took it off screen to remove it. And there's also screws on the bottom. You have to remove the speaker grill. It's just a sticky tape. So be careful when you remove it, so you don't rip it. If you rip it, it looks ugly. And also um, leave it in a clean place so that you can replace it back when you reassemble it. The adhesive is actually quite hard, so be careful when you pull on it, you might break the plastic clips, or actually the plastic grills. Especially where here, where the buttons are, it's really easy to rip the adhesive or the sticky tape. The sticky tape. So be careful around here so you don't rip it.
there is six screws under it that you need to open, that you need to remove before you can remove the back cover. After you remove all the screws, the back cover basically just comes off as it doesn't really have clips on it. Be careful, don't pull your back cover off as you're going to rip a cable. The cable that I just removed is for your buttons. So, so we need to remove these cables. That I'm pointing out now as it blocks and hinders you from opening up a few things. This screw here holds down your SD card reader. And there's a cable attached to the SD card reader that you also have to remove. There's another cable, the other cable is your NFC and under this you need to do all this just to reach your hard drive. The black thing I just ripped off is your sticky tape. There's one screw holding your hard drive down. Your hard drive is a M.2 80mm long. I'm just going to remove the black stick tape as I don't want it. So now we're going to remove the battery and there's a few screws holding the battery down. Remember to, remember to remove your white cable a bit as it blocks the screw. Don't have to unplug it but just moving it a bit is enough. So now that we remove all the screws, you just lift up your battery. And it comes off. We're going to detach it. Now we're going to remove the motherboard. So to remove the motherboard, we need this detach all the cables attached to it. There are a few cables on the other side as well. So there's four screws holding it down and there's the fifth screw under underneath a cable. I haven't removed all my cables, so 
please make uh, please remember there's also cables on the other side too. You can lift it up, so lift it up gently. We need to remove our heatsink and fan as it's connected. The fan is not connected, but the fan and the heatsink uses the same screw, so you have to remove the fan before you remove the heatsink. So there's two screws holding the fan down. Remember to detach your fan cable. So now that we remove the fan, the heatsink will come off. There's a few things that get clogged. There's a few cables that block the way, so just wobble it out slowly and make your way through the cables. There's this cable here too, you can also remove. This is your LCD cable. So it's just a word of warning, it's quite tough to remove it. That black thing is sticky tape again. It's just to block it from having contact with other things. You can remove it, you don't actually need it. So there's four screws holding the heating down. We don't remove all the four screws. You don't have to remove them in any order, but when you put it back, try to put it back in the way I put it back. It's so this heat the thermal paste can be spread out evenly. When you remove your heatsink, you need to replace and clean up the old thermal paste. And don't be cheap on your thermal paste, as thermal paste is not really expensive and it's actually really important. So here we go. I'm just going to get my cloth to clean it. You don't need any special alcohols or things to clean it. Just a basic cloth and rub it, and it'll come off. Here's my cloth. Try not to use tissue, as tissue breaks apart. If you use tissue, try and make sure you don't use it over your laptop like I'm doing now, or else parts of it drop down. So that's basically it. As you can see now, it's all clean. The idea is try to clean it to the best you can. Don't overdo it. <laughs> so I'm just going to remove the black sticky tape. It's getting annoying. You don't have to be that gentle. It won't break easily. It actually doesn't break at all. I'm just going to move it away as it's easier for me to clean it on my leg or on myself instead of just leaning instead of leaning forward and trying to rub it off.
so here you go it's all clean so these black dots are the RAM if you want to know so I'm just going to get my firmware base so I'm using Noctua NT-H1 it only costs $10 so you want to put half of rice grain on the small square and one rice grain size of thermal paste on the big one well you can put less than half a rice grain on the little small square as it's small, probably put a quarter So here's the heatsink. Normally heatsinks has numbers next to it to tell you which screw to screw in, but this one doesn't. Don't know why the Sony ones don't. Most other manufacturers have numbers next to it to tell you which one to screw in first. So the idea is just basically screw it in a zigzaggy style. Or you can just follow me and you should be fine. And that's about it. Thanks for watching. This disassembly is relatively ridiculously hard. Do not open it up if you don't have to, as it's too, it requires too many steps and too many screws for you to remove it. Opening up, you do have to open up to access your hard drive, but that's basically the only thing that you can remove. So that's your choice if you want to go through all this. And thanks for watching.